Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this one, we have a really interesting uh, scenario here. We have a horse uh, that a guy bought, and uh, not just any guy, he's a very highly credentialed uh, military veteran. He actually has been shot multiple times um, in combat, and uh, just an awesome, awesome guy that I had the pleasure of working with uh, this week in Texas. And uh, his horse, uh, he recently bought it, he got on it and it bucked him off and broke his back. And so um, he's been doing some groundwork with it. He's been rehabbing his back. And uh, now they brought him to this course where I'm going to spend five days working with his horse and uh, helping him kind of get over that hump. So let's get into it. I'm here with uh, Blaine and uh, we're going to be working with your horse Dutton. And uh, Blaine is a very decorated military veteran. So I just wanted to say a big thank you for your service. Thanks, we really appreciate you. Appreciate um, you. And uh, can you just tell us a little bit about kind of what happened in the situation that, that led you to wanting some help help from me? Well, we had uh, we just got our quarter horse Dutton uh, about seven months ago. We're about a month, month and a half into it. You know, we've only ridden him a couple times other than seeing the demonstration and stuff. We knew he was young. He just turned four. Green, myself, hadn't ridden horses much at all. We worked with him a little bit. And again, he hadn't been ridden that much at all. Worked him on the ground a little bit, got up on him, and instant ejection seat threw me right off. End up uh, fracturing my spine, my L4 and L5. Again, that was pretty much, you know, the humility check, you know, the humble check yeah. and reality check. So uh, definitely had to go back to, you know, back to zero. So you've been doing some groundwork with him. It's been like three or four months. It's been about two and a half months. Two and a half months. Wow. Just ground. So broken back. You get back on your horse. Yes, sir. <laughs> You're back here. Yes, sir. Wow. That's, that's tough, that's hardcore. So, all right, well, we're gonna get started with him and uh, kind of see what we got and see if we can find some holes and help him get a little safer. Um, they told me that he was spooky and that was one of the big things. They wanted me to expose him, uh, you know, and see. So yeah, he's, uh, <laughs> he's pretty sensitive. So when I have, whenever somebody tells me the horse is spooky, one of the first thing, tools that I like to use is this flag and uh, just kind of see, because this horse is really quiet, leading around, didn't really run into anything. And um, the, the flight, there we go, kind of settled in. But to me, it's not a surprise um, if, if he has that big of a reaction to just a flag moving up and down. You know, it's like, it, it's pretty easy. You can tell that he'd be a sensitive enough horse that if um, you made a mistake while you're riding him that he could, he could spook pretty good or, or think about bucking or something like that. And uh, also the owner thought that maybe he wasn't used to the back cinch, that that might have been the reason that he started bucking. And so I'm going to look into that as well. All right, so he kind of came through that pretty good. That's not bad. There we go. So those of you that watch my videos, one of the things you know I'm big on is uh, teaching the three circle game and so right away I noticed that when he circles he kind of had takes a counter bend and that is a little bit more of a defensive posture and so one of the things that I want to work on here is um, get him to bend his ribs and one of the things that if you have a horse that's sensitive and reactive to things is they can talk you into um, being too soft and slow with them and not actually exposing them to to pressure and so when I have a sensitive horse, I'm actually going to be more inclined to be willing to touch them and not try to kind of hold back and sneak around them. You don't want to get sneaky around a horse because then you'll all of a sudden be, in, be surprised. All right, guys, so I got a little bit of a spoiler alert here. Um, after working with this horse a bit, I realized that the horse is pretty limited on his experience. So I think he has some training and that sort of thing, but I think he's pretty limited on his experience and he's, he's not really ready for a beginner rider. Now, as you guys know um, from seeing Blaine in the interview, um, he's a very accomplished military veteran and uh, you know, very unfortunate that he broke his back with this horse. And I really think um, this horse needs to continue training. And I have the perfect trainer for him down here, uh, my assistant, Kara. She was my assistant trainer for years and uh, she does a really incredible job. She's only an hour away. She's actually helping me with this course down here in Texas. And uh, long story short, Blaine could use some help uh, supporting financially uh, to be able to send his horse to training. So what I'm asking you guys to do is help support Blaine um, on a GoFundMe. So I'm going to be contributing to that. And um, I really think this horse needs some more training uh, to get him and Blaine put back together and safe. So if you guys want to help us support uh, a really amazing uh, military veteran, um, please do that on the GoFundMe. I'll leave a link in the description. Let's get back to the video. So then whatever you do on one side, you always got to do on the other side. The other thing, I don't know if the, 
microphone is picking this up, but he's making kind of a, a sheath noise. And uh, geldings tend to do that when they're holding tension. And um, so he's kind of making that noise. So we haven't even got to putting a saddle on him or anything like that. And we're already kind of getting him a little bit tight and bothered. So we definitely want to work through these things on the ground before we think about putting a leg over. Because whenever I'm the, the next man up, <laughs> so to speak, on a horse that has already kind of launched somebody, um, I want to feel like there's something I changed in their connection, in their confidence, in their understanding uh, before I put my leg back on to see if, if, otherwise, why should I expect them to do anything differently than what they did on the last ride? And so it's been a few months too, and uh, I don't know this horse or what his history is prior to that. That's really all I know about him. So that's what we're going to go with. Now, it is common with horses that are a little bit tighter like he is, um, and him thinking it was reactive to the back cinch. One of the things I'd, I would prefer to do with him is put a saddle on sooner than later and uh, give him time to get comfortable with it. So we're going to do that here pretty soon. Kind of go from there. Good. Now today's day one, so it's a little bit of an evaluation and uh, just trying to get to know him. So I, I do like to move through things pretty quick and just make some observations and mental notes about how it's going. So one of the things, we'll just see if we can throw the rope over his head here. You know, it can be very scary to a horse to have something kind of coming at him quicker like that. There, he's handled that pretty well. Very good. So then I like to check out if they get a little bit goosey around things being around their hindquarters at all. We're gonna put this rope all the way down there. Good, that was very nice. Another test that I like to do is I'll put a rope around their front leg here. And uh, they didn't tell me that he has a pullback issue or anything like that, but sometimes the, when a horse is, feels claustrophobic, which is the, kind of the reason they would go to bucking is they're feeling claustrophobic, um, any situation that you put the horse in that can cause them to feel claustrophobic can kind of trigger a reaction. And so I like to put them in different binds and kind of see just how, how well they think through pressure, what their response is. Um, and kind of go from there. There you go. So he got a little bothered, but he kind of came through it pretty good there. We'll take that. We'll keep, keep searching here. All right, so got my trusty lariat rope out here, and uh, we can test things out a little bit further here. So one of the things I like to do is uh, just let them wear this around their hindquarters. Kind of a good test. See if they get a little bit reactive to that feel around there. So I really like that, that's, that's solid. No, no reaction there. So. Whenever I'm evaluating a horse and I find something, there's just nothing there. I just move on. You don't need to camp out on something if things are already there. I'm lo what I'm looking for are holes. Um, and I like to also check out putting the rope on their hind leg. A lot of times horses can be really guarded around this area just above their, their hock. And again, I'm just testing it. I don't know. You know, I don't know the horse or anything. So um, I got to make, you know, kind of a lot of quick quick decisions and uh, I only have five days to work with him here and so I just want to make the most of it so I'll put a little feel and just see so you can see that bothered him so I'll just put a little feel here and so their main goal so I asked the owners you know to set goals for this week um, for the horses that we're working with and one of their main goals for him was for me to um, test things out and expose them and see, kind of see where the holes are. And so, um, you know, this is going a little bit deeper than just your average doing some groundwork, moving them around on a circle and side passing and backing up and stuff like that. This is, this is really trying to get in there and find kind of any holes that they may have and bother them. And so, you know, a lot of times on these videos, the horses that I show are the ones that are a little more of the interesting ones. <laughs> you know, all the other horses that we're training that are not that exciting or interesting are the ones we don't really show you. Um, just because it's more, you know, average. So a lot of things you're seeing me do, it seems like maybe this is what I do with every single horse I work with. 
and the fundamentals are for sure, but I don't necessarily uh, test and expose every single horse with the layer rope around their leg or the rope between their front legs. These are a little more um, things that come up with horses that are have already maybe learned to to bolt or buck a rider off or or have some some fear issues because now now we got to find some deeper ways to work through that a bit to come out the other side. But he's passing all this really well. So the next thing I want to see with him is I want to ask him to canter on a longer rope and just see what his impulsion is. Um, once I do that, I think I might be ready to put a saddle on him. But I like to test this out before I saddle him just to see what his response is. And that way also, if I put the saddle on and things change, the way he's moving changes, how willing he is to canter, how fast he's cantering, if any of those things change, then I know the saddle might be a little bit of the issue. And that's, that's kind of what the owners feel like they've identified was the, the problem that day was him not being comfortable with the back cinch. And uh, it very well could be, but it could be other things too. So we're gonna try to be real thorough with our preparation. And it, it also very well could be combination of green horse, green, green owner, green rider. And uh, it could just be, it could be that simple that it just, you know, the horse, he did something the horse wasn't expecting and the horse did something he wasn't expecting. And next thing you know, you're in a, in a rodeo situation. He does seem pretty easy to get him to go. He doesn't seem impulsive necessarily, but he also did tell me that his feet got trimmed a little bit short recently. And so you might see him be a little bit tender footed here and there. <laughs> Nothing like a little buck to get into a canner. There we go. And so to me, that's interesting. You know, if he's doing that without even uh, a saddle being on him, you know, to me, that's a little tension there, a little bit. I don't want to go forward when you ask me to. So it seems like there could be just a little bit of resistance to going forward. And then I also kind of observe what it takes to slow them back down and change directions. And I had to put a pretty good feel on the halter there to get him to change. It wasn't terrible, but. So again, there I got a little resistance by me being the leader, which means, you know, I'm, I'm bossing this horse around in here. I'm pushing him around, asking him to do, do things that I want to do. And so he's got to kind of get a little bit more comfortable with that. There we go. So we definitely found a little bit of resistance just by cantering. We haven't even put a saddle on. Um, but he's definitely got to get a more willing response to going forward. Because you can see he kind of aims his hindquarters at me. He doesn't just protest moving forward. So that was a smoother transition. There he's licking and chewing, decompressing a little bit. So we'll let him get settled here. Now I like to get one or two consistent transitions. Now right there when I went to change directions, I don't know if you guys noticed, but he really kind of crowded through my space. And that kind of fits in with what I'm saying of he has resistance to me bossing him around and asking him where to, you know, kind of telling him where to go. And so that's something to be aware of is instead of moving out on the circle and being afraid of me and moving away, he came in and crowded in after I've just been putting pressure on him with the flag. And so that's one of the indicators to say that I'm, I'm, I'm kind of hitting the nail on the head here with him and that he needs to uh, uh, have a little bit better response to pressure. And pressure could just be me bringing my life up or pressure, you know, can be the flag, it can be the rope because he's leaning on the, the halter quite a bit. And if he's pulling on the halter quite a bit while he's out there, well, there's a likely chance that he's gonna lean on a rein too. You know, if he's pretty soft off the halter on a circle. So I'm just gonna address this issue a little bit. When a horse comes through and cuts you off, if they feel squeezed when they go by you, especially when their hindquarters come by, if they kick out, you're in a really bad spot there to get kicked. So it may seem like not that big a deal. It's like, oh, just back out of the way. But if they do it when you're not expecting, if you get in the habit of always letting them do that, um, you're, you're just kind of risking getting kicked. Now that was a much better response. So I pointed out to the right and he kind of stepped out and went out away from me. Let's see if we can get a better response to cantering. There we go. So we're gonna go with that. So again, when a horse has resistance and they get better, leave them alone. It's really important to not get emotional uh, when you're doing this because 
the horses don't have any emotion to it. He's just not used to the human expecting this much of him. And so now that I'm expecting a little more, this is the resistance that I need to work through to make him safer to ride. Um, but if I were to take that personally when he kicks out, I mean, it's like, you horse, I got to get you now. Well, they move on. Horses live moment to moment. They move on very quickly. And so we need to have a short memory there. And uh, once they make a change, that's what I mean by have a short memory. Once they make a change, move on. I don't need to punish him or work him harder or do anything like that. Once he gets a little better, soften right back up and, and move on to the next thing. Don't, don't hold on to that stuff. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get him saddled up and see what we got from there. Now, right there, he just, as we kind of came over here, he blew out. So he's relaxing and turning loose. And it will get a horse a little bit um, maybe worried or uncomfortable at first when they're not used to the human being in charge. As they turn loose to the human being in charge, you find that you can get to a deeper level of confidence and relaxation that you maybe didn't have, have before that. So, so that was just a little key point here when I brought him to the saddle. Now, because I don't know if he's going to buck with the saddle or not, I don't want to saddle him right by the fence. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my saddle and carry it out here. Just a little tip when you're saddling, one of the things I like to do is try to really make sure that your saddle and pad are really squared up and that you got even pad all the way around. And then something I think your horse will thank you for is instead of having this pad kind of riding down on their withers, kind of like that, uh, grab underneath the pad here and just kind of try to lift it up into the, I think it's called the gullet here a little bit and uh, clear their hair out of there. That'll just be a little bit more comfortable, a little less pinching going on and it'll keep your horse a little bit a little bit happier when you're saddling them up. But to, to me, there's only one right way to have that saddle on and all the other ways are going to be in a, in a situation that is either maybe less safe to be riding them or maybe not in as comfortable a way for your horse. So I'm pretty picky about how they get saddled there. So I just got it snugged up. I usually tighten my cinch up three times. So the first one is just to kind of get the saddle to stay on if you were to move around a little bit right now. It maybe wouldn't hold through a rodeo bucking spree, but it would probably hold through just a little bit of moving around. And then I'm not going to tighten the back cinch up too much. And then I just kind of let them stand here and just relax. And then I'm going to tighten it up a second time. And then right before I step on, I go ahead and tighten it up a third, third time. I do want to tighten it up a little bit more with him, though, just because I don't, I don't, he, I'm expecting him to maybe buck a little bit. But I think the owner's actually been saddling him, just not riding him. So we'll see. There we go. So just by giving him that extra 30 seconds there, I was able to pour, pull out another four inches of latigo pretty easily without trying to have to really get into him to tighten it up. And then I don't like to get in a hurry about asking them to canter or work. You know, if you're, a lot of times it seems like if people are expecting the horse to buck, they just, they get out in a distance and they're like, go. And I would like him to get saddled and just get relaxed, not get, not get saddled and get in a hurry to do something. So So that sheath noise kind of came back. He's got a little bit of tension going on again. Thought about bucking there a little bit, not too bad. So side passing is one of my favorite exercises, especially with a horse that's holding some tension in the rib cage. Uh, because side passing requires them to move laterally and bend their ribs. And so you notice that his feet are really disunited right now. He's, he's moving front end, back end, front end, back end uh, at, at different times. When the feet get synchronized, that's when I know he's thinking about there. 
that's when he's thinking about side passing when those feet get get synchronized and so what I'm looking for is for him to do that smoothly side pass with some rhythm in his feet and then also if he could even get to where he drops his head well, you can see how herky-jerky it is and that's all those are all indicators that there's tension there that's better See there, he side passed, his feet were, were synchronized, the left hind and the right front, and the left front and the right hind got synced up, and then he also dropped his head. There happens to be some hay there and a, and a goat, <laughs> so per the location that we're at here. So let's try that again. There we go. But definitely this would be something I'd want this horse to get really good at. I felt a little claustrophobic there coming into the corner. So we'll just kind of finish that. And then I like to finish the side pass with a little pattern here of just sending him through me in the fence. And I liked how calmly he did that. You can see he's kind of turning loose here. So even though he's side passing, I'm not accepting it because I think he can do it with a little bit more relaxation. And so for this horse, it's whenever you have a horse that's holding some tension, it's not enough to just do the maneuver, the movement. You have to get the maneuver to be relaxed and have rhythm in their stride. And so that's kind of what he's lacking. All right, got a little bit better. There's a little lick and chew, so he's starting to turn loose a little bit. That lick and chew means he just got a little more comfortable. And so I'm doing this until not only does he side pass, but he starts to get comfortable side passing. There we go. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put a snaffle on him and just see kind of what he thinks of that. All right, so we've got him bridled up now, and now I'm just gonna put him through a few different tests um, and see what his response is to the bit and uh, maybe start thinking about getting on him. So one of the things I'm gonna ask him to do here is just walk a circle around me, and he really tends to push his rib cage in a lot. And so I'm just gonna add a little rhythm to the stirrup here and asking him to step over, there it is. So he's bending his head to the bit pretty good, but I want him to step over off that leg. Go ahead and test his back up here. So he feels pretty heavy on that back up. So that's not great. So wh when I'm going through these things, I'm kind of grading it in my mind of like red light, yellow light, green light. And to me, I'm just getting a lot of yellow lights. And so it's kind of like, well, if you do these 100 things right, you're probably fine to ride. The question is, wouldn't it be nice to maybe get 80 things right and 20 things wrong and still the horse still be tolerant? <laughs> and so have a little bit of room for error, a little bit of margin for error. And so there's two things that can give a rider more room for error. Cause it's like, we're not gonna be perfect all the time. You're, you're accidentally gonna bump the horse when you didn't mean to. You might use the reins more or less when you should have done something different. Something else might, that's outside of your control. The dog might come running out. The goat might decide to headbutt the other goat. You know, it's like, who knows what could happen, right? <laughs> and so the, the point is, there's two things that you can do to build higher tolerances in a horse. One is higher confidence. So they can handle more pressure. So to me, this horse was kind of okay, it's like an okay grade, maybe a five out of 10, a six out of 10 on the confidence side. He got pretty bothered of a couple things, not very bothered about other things. So I'd kind of rank him right there, kind of in the middle. Um, then the next thing is yields. And so it's like, well, if they yield the pressure really well, you can get yourself out of a lot of situations if you can pick them up and they say yes. <laughs> but if they say no and they push through the pressure, well, then you're really banking on nothing going wrong while you're, while you're riding them. And so he's just kind of in that middle of the road. So to, the two things that I want to see him get his confidence up a little higher, but I also want to see his yields get a little better, a little bit softer, his understanding of pressure. 
and those two things are going to come together. Uh, meanwhile, we have this kind of underlying theme of he has some resistance to, to yielding and, and pressure. So you remember, think back to when I was asking him to canter on the ground, he was kicking out, that sort of thing. So it's like, it's the same horse, so even though if I switch from being on the ground on his back, he's probably still going to have that resistance in there. And so these are all the kind of things that we got to work through. And, but if you're working through it on his back, there's a little more risk to the human. I mean, on the ground, you could get kicked or run over or something like that. But on their back, you can get bucked off or run off with. And so you got to be realistic about, you know, what kind of risks you're willing to take. And so, again, for me, he's kind of middle of the road. Um, and so I would like to get all these things better, but I think I'm probably going to put a little ride on him today. And I'm just trying to talk you through what I'm thinking about when I'm, you know, I get to go around all these around the country and, and uh, have people want me to ride these horses that other people have not successfully ridden. <laughs> and so then I got to like make all these decisions pretty quickly based on what the horse is telling me where they're at. And uh, hopefully they work out pretty good. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and um, check out his lateral flexion and then maybe think about stepping up on him. So I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to step up and ride him, but um, we're going to save that for part two here. So this is going to be part one. So if you guys want to see how this ride goes, make sure you check out the video that we post next week for part two featuring Dutton and me putting the first ride on.